What's up, everybody? I'm Stan. I'm Mac. And welcome to MES Tech, the hot mess of tech shows. And as you see, I'm not in a great mood. I did lose the last beer that we currently have for our recording session. So what are we doing today, Stan? Uh, well, because we were talking about the 9900K, and obviously we are shooting this video days later in the same clothes... We want to talk about the 9900K a little bit more because a lot of people have a lot of press that's going on about this, and it's a it's the latest, the greatest, the first eight eight core 16 thread machine that's coming out for Intel that is available to consumers at a reasonable price. And if you know, five hundred and thirty dollars is reasonable. Even yes, <laughs> five hundred thirty dollars. Um, for to me, it's just it's a flagship Intel. I mean, that's exciting all in its own. Yeah, I don't have that kind of excitement. <laughs> no, you you view it in a much more statistical way where, you know, AMD has always provided a lot of product for price, which is awesome, um, especially with their Threadripper stuff and the 2700s, 2700X, 2600X, whatever. Yep. They, they're doing pretty well, especially Core V, what Intel's putting out. So. Yeah, the other thing they provide with a chip is a cooler. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> Shush you. <laughs> With RGP. <laughs> it's fine. But in the spirit of giving everybody what they really want, what they want, and what they need, hopefully what you guys really want to see, we are going to be doing a video that is breaking down what we would consider like two different builds or two different approaches to builds for something like the 9900K. You got it. So we're going to, uh, we're going to be taking a look at something that we would probably put together, a budget build. Um... So where money is probably, you know, an object. And then we're also going to take a look at something where we think we would probably go if that was, we were trying for the best of the best and then going for an overclocking machine as one day we hope to. Absolutely. One of the things that you are going to notice is that we do not have any RTX 2080 Ti's or 2080's on here <laughs> because you can't buy them right now. They're not available, they haven't been shipped out yet, they've been delayed multiple times, and even though the RTX 2080 Ti is the darling of benchmarks and overclocking competitions between a variety of different channels, they're just not available to the consumer, and as far as the price to performance value you know, equation, they just don't have the kind of support necessary for their main features at this point in time. If you're talking about deep learning super sampling, which is going to be a great way to get better imagery, at a lower performance cost because you can take those Turing cores and then really utilize those instead of pushing the CUDA cores, which are relative and which are relegated to the rasterization aspect of things. That's a huge advantage that hasn't been exploited yet. And then the RTX lighting effects, because of the way that they operate, they should be a lot less intensive than your standard rasterized global illumination if they're implemented properly, but which hasn't happened nothing's yet. implemented them properly hasn't yet. Hasn't happened yet. We haven't even seen, we had to have the, the DXR ray tracing update to DirectX 12 pulled back with 1809 because 1809 was deleting people's shit. And then so, we had to find the video online on another person's channel because it automatically pulled off our machine. Yeah. So we, we could <laughs> we can do the testing for you guys, but we are going to go through what we would consider to be, let's start off with a budget build. And when we say budget build, when you're talking about a 9900K, it currently has a pre-order price ranging. It was supposed to be $488 yeah. or $499 on the retail side. And that's already going up. But like Amazon's got it at $529.99 and Newegg even has it at $579.99, as well as a couple other places that are allowing you to do pre-orders. And we've had to put it custom into the PC part picker list. We're going to post a link to this picker list down in the description. So that way, that way you can go check everything out and make sure that we're, you know, at the time of recording, all of these prices are valid, but you might want to check before you order anything currently. Yeah, um, it really depends on what the 9900K starts doing, because as we've seen with the pre-orders, it's going up from now, and hopefully it levels out, but if, you know, if uh, sourcing is still an issue, if resources, supply keeps dwindling, it might still keep going up. I mean, again, it's the flagship, the newest, greatest. People want it. Supply and demand, folks. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so no, we're, the 9900K is a given for these builds. But when we take a look at a little bit more of the information that we've got here, you you really want to go with a liquid cooler. But if you're on a budget, there are a couple different really good options as far as air coolers that are going to be able to support the chip because the chip is rated from the factory at like 91 or 95 watts. 95 watts from what I saw. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to run hot. So you need a cooler to adapt to that. Uh, it's going to be a really, 
a pretty high-end air cooler needed, maybe a 240 water cooler, and up from there, yeah. in my opinion. So in the budget build, we're going with an old standby. It's going to be the Cooler Master a Hyper 212. Uh, I mean, it's the Evo is just one of those pieces of hardware that if you haven't owned one yet, I'm surprised. You know, it's just been that much of a standard as far as air cooling is. And it's a lot less exotic than something like a Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 or like a Noctua DH14 or DH15, something along those lines. Which might get annoying. Uh, or, but they're not necessarily quiet. <laughs> they, they are very quiet. They're, they're very quiet, but they're also... 80 to to $100 for an air cooler, and at that point in time, you might as well get into something liquid. A Hyper 212 Evo can be got, you can get one for like 25 bucks. Right. And that's going to be able to do like 180 watt, 200 watt TDP, which for an overclock chip like the 9900K, you should be able to push some respectable overclocks without worrying about cooling, even on air. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're talking about the motherboard, the motherboard that we want to go with, uh, we don't see the benefit yet as far as the z390 chipset there are some extra features like the usb 3.1 compatibility mm -hmm. and a few other things that are going along there but there's not quite enough for us to justify a jump into a 200 250 300 400 500 600 dollar motherboard depending on which one you're looking at so you're talking about an msi godlike or something along those lines that's retailing for 450 holy fuck <laughs> it's just it's ridiculous i i've never paid that much for a motherboard well, you don't have to pay that much for a motherboard now because if you're talking about the EVGA Z370 for the win, it has an 11-phase VRM. It's got one of the best-built boards as far as the, the overall layout and scheme of the board is concerned. And the 11-phase VRM should be more than enough to power a 9900K up to the 170 to 200 watt range, which is what you've reached with overclocking on similar boards in an 8700K. Right. Um, and it's also, the interface is actually really nice. Yeah, the, the BIOS, which if you've seen Jay, uh, Jay's Two Cents overclocking on the X299 platform, the uh, X299 Dark, I think that's what it is, mm -hmm. with his 7980XE as he's going for all these records, uh, it's a very similar interface and it's pretty easy to use, but the, the Asus is really the standard that everybody lives by. I'd say that it's a competitor. Awesome. Uh, but the price point on that compared to your $200, $300, $400 boards... We're talking 120 bucks. <laughs> Much better. Yeah, and the Much compatibility better. between the Z370 and this new 9th gen has already been updated inside the BIOS, so you don't have to worry about day one issues. If you buy this board, you can update it, I think even without the CPU, but it's one of those things where you've got a lot of availability and a lot of ability to utilize this really early on. Perfect. Uh, for RAM, we think that 3200 is really the minimum as far as DDR4 speeds. I mean, you're into the DDR4 mainframe, so you might as well... Get something there, otherwise, you know, your DDR3 speeds, high, that's me right now. Yeah, well, we, we could go on, we could have gone with like a 3600 kit, something along those lines. Latencies get really high when it comes to the 3600s. We're going to see... timing start to get pretty loose, so it's, it's a trade-off at that point, unless you start going big money for high clock speeds as well as tight timings, so it's... It's trade-off. Yeah, but with this, you know, 16 gigs and 3200 kit, that's really what you're going to want for something like the 9900K. And in the case of this, we can get some Trident Z memory from G-Skill for $138 right now, which is a pretty good value for that speed and that quality of RAM. Right. And how many how many gig? 16 gigabits? gigs. 16 gigs. Two 8 gig sticks. Cool. So you can run it in dual channel, which is a lot, which is the maximum capacity for a Z370 or Z390 chipset. None of them are doing quad channel, so there's no benefit in, unless you're running two match sets of uh, of RAM. Right. And that also leaves us for a uh, nice upgrade in the future. Absolutely. If you ever wanted to do some uh, workstation stuff or gaming right now, I think 16 gig is pretty okay. Yeah. Um, 32 better. But. Yeah, it's, it's going to give you more overhead in some respects, but it's really meant for things like working in 3D, rendering 4K video on like Premiere Pro, stuff like that. Uh, when we come to storage, if we're doing, going on the budget, we're going to have an OS drive that's going to boot out of the M.2 slot because on this board you have the M.2 tie into the PCI Express, which gives you the ability to have like a 1500, you know, 1 1.5 gigabyte per second read speed, which is 
ridiculous. If it's there, use it. It's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> but it's a, a 120 gigs is more than enough for the operating system to run off of, which is all we really care about for a boot drive, or at least in my case, that's all I really care about for the boot drive. Right, maybe a boot drive and then maybe your favorite video game. And that can swap in and out as you play. Yeah, you there's know? a couple different software options that allow you to actually swap different video games between different sections of hard drives without really screwing up your Steam library. So we'll probably take a look at those in the future. But to back everything up, a Western Digital Caviar Blue, which is a 7200 RPM drive, SATA 3 speeds, which is, you know, we're getting up to 6 gig a second, which it's not going to hit those because of the mechanical nature of the drive, but it's still more than enough to not really impact your loading times on video games or other projects. Right, and you can get them at really big capacities for not a lot of money, which well, yeah. is the key. One terabyte, 43 bucks, 44 bucks, mm -hmm. and then that 120 gig M.2 drive, we're at like $38. So your, your storage solution, which gets you super fast boot up and more than enough storage for a pretty decent library of Steam games, is going to be well under the $100 mark. Uh, next thing, if we're going to be budgeting, and we, we uh, this is you a look really... You so sad about this. It's because it's a really <clears> tough <throat> decision, because the vast majority of people that are out there playing on Steam, if according to the latest Steam survey, 1080p is the dominant, dominant resolution that people are gaming at, with 768, or you know basically 720p, coming in at a close second. Well, not even close second, but coming in second. People gaming at 1440p and 4K are less than 4% or 5% of the overall Steam community. Right. So looking for 1440p or 4K gaming, not necessarily a big deal. And in most cases, that is going to be a GPU bottleneck just due to the resolution of the textures. Right, just the nature of what you're trying to do is going to be video card limited and <laughs> for the foreseeable future. I mean, unless you're dropping $1,200 on a you know, 2080 Ti yeah. that you can't buy yet. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> So uh, we're taking this into account as far as 1080p gaming, and that is where the bottlenecks really happen as far as CPUs versus GPUs. So the 1070 Ti is a really good value, and with a little bit of overclocking through something like Afterburner, Precision XOC, or say like Zotac, I mean, oh, there's a couple different avenues in order to overclock these cards, you can get GTX 1080 performance for about $80 to $90 less. Which and this is, is for a brand bad. new card. So the one that we chose is going to be the EVGA GTX 1070 Ti for the win 2 gaming ICX. So the name is very long, um, but that is going to give you a lot of overhead as far as cooling and performance. And it should be pretty easy to get it up to GTX 1080 for the win levels, at least at stock clock speeds for the 1080 for the win. Perfect. And that's what we're really looking for. I mean, if you wanted to do some tweaking, it's there. If not, still an excellent performer as is. Um, and most of those programs will actually do a lot for you anyway, just by messing with the uh, boost voltage. Yeah, but you should be able to get really high resolution, you know, refresh rates, you know, getting close to the 120 FPS mark in 1080p gaming, especially if you're talking about like esports titles like Rocket League and, and that kind of stuff, you should be absolutely crushing that in 1080p. <laughs> so, you know, it might be time to invest in a 120 hertz, 144 hertz monitor in 1080p if you do something like this, because your CPU and your GPU are going to be able to keep up with you. Uh, to finish things off, we're going to go with an EVGA bronze rated 600 watt power supply with the card that we have and the processor that we have, even overclocking the 9900K. You're still going to be in that 400 to 450 watts, and that's stress testing both the GPU and the CPU at the same time. And a 600 watt power supply that's rated 80 plus bronze, that's going to provide you more than enough power over that period of time in order to really support that. I totally agree. If you wanted to future proof it a little bit, you could go with something a little bit bigger. But at the same time, this is a budget build for the 9900K. As we've seen with technology progressing, they get more efficient. So that's always a good thing. Yeah. Um, uh, to finish things out, uh, we're going to go with, say, something like a, a deep cool case. It's the Matrix 55 ATX mid tower case, which has got a lot of different options. I'm not necessarily a fan of the drive bay placement in the lower portion of it, uh, and it doesn't have a, uh, a power supply shroud, but it is tempered glass, and it does provide a lot of other features that are really cool, and it's a, a pretty well laid out case. There are other options that are available out there. However, I didn't necessarily see one that really spoke to me in terms of price for a budget build. Right. I think that it's a good all-arounder that could be a really good place for a custom build. Uh, but if you have a different style, 
keeping it in that 60 to 80 range. I'm sure that there's another really cool one from like Fractal, NZXT, uh, you know, some uh, Rosewell cases are actually really nice right now. There's a bunch of different options that are available on the market. So the case is really up to you guys. But bringing to that to a grand total of around $1,395, for $1,400, you've got a 1080p gaming monster with the fastest processor that you can possibly buy in the market, and it's going to be able to absolutely crush any kind of productivity because the memory and the bandwidth for that is there. I love it. <laughs> and it's pretty future-proof. I mean, you could upgrade the power supply, you could throw another 1070 Ti in there if you wanted, and then there you go, boom, SLI, and that's bumping... Pumping well in SLI enabled games. Well, yeah. If you've got another ninety, if you've got a ninety nine hundred K that's inside your system and it's already operating at like five, five point one, five point two, five point three gigahertz, then the only thing you really need to upgrade on this machine in order to take it to the next level and get into your fourteen forty P and ten, uh, you know, you... yeah, your your four K <laughs> gaming is really going to be limited by the the GPU. So when the RTX twenty eighty Ti's become available and possibly you know you get some six months to nine months from now, you get a lot more games that use RTX and stuff like that. That's when you're going to bust out the big dollars for a 2080 Ti, and it should slot right into here without any real issues. Even drawing the maximum power out of a 2080 Ti, you know, hitting that power slider all the way up to 130%, you're going to be pulling 350, 360 watts. So if you've got your 160, 170 watts stress test power, you've got your 360 watts running Furmark stress test power, you're still underneath that 600 watt band, you know, bandwidth limit. So your average gaming loads are gonna fall somewhere in that 400 to 450 range. So you should still be good, single GPU, 2080 Ti, and the 9900K with a 600 watt power supply. <laughs> it's gonna be a monster. It's gonna be a little tight. Yeah. But you should have enough overhead for that. And the card, the board, it's all going to be supported by that because those that 11-phase VRM, it's going to be pretty standard. Um, but that's really the budget 9900K build, and it doesn't really end up being much of a budget build because it's still $1,400. It's a 9900K build. Well, yeah. If you wanted to get something with really good 5K performance and you wanted to save yourself somewhere in the neighborhood of $200, you could just downgrade the 9900K to an 8700K, still get 5K gaming, and be right around the $1,100 mark, $1,200 mark instead of the $1,400 mark. And if you wanted to keep yourself around that $1,400 mark and you could take that away, you could bump up to a 1080 Ti. A Zotac 1080 Ti is currently $679. So... For the $270 upgrade in GPU and the $200 downgrade or $170 downgrade in your actual CPU, your performance gain in higher resolution gaming as well as 1080p gaming is going to be off the charts. Double but, thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, so that's where we are with our budget 9900K build. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit more fresh. Uh, well, I wouldn't necessarily say fresh, but we're going to do another one of these for a little bit more premium style build. So hit us up in the comments down below. Let us know what you like about it, what you want us to take uh, check out. If you want us to do like polls to see what kind of builds you guys want to see us do and how you want to see us break them down. But as always, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button. Uh, hit us up in the comments down below so that we can you know learn these things that you guys want to see. And as always... See you next time. Oh yeah, subscribe.